Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where we're a little ways away from our station here and of course we are looking to put this thing back on the surface of the moon for additional mining. So we're going to go ahead and warp around to here. We're going to get further and further away over time from the station. We're in a slightly different orbit now. Goodbye station. That's okay. We should probably extend our solar panels relatively soon here. Let's go ahead and do so. There we go. And let's just go ahead and target RCS off. Let's go ahead and target retrograde. Surface retrograde. Here. Okay, that'll do. And we need to find ourselves a nice flat landing site. And looking at this, we might want to land up here. I don't want to land in the crater. We know, uh... We know that that's a little too not flat for us. So maybe we should land up by the experiment control station. Somewhere over in this region over. Something like this. And we're only using this for timing, really. Not necessarily for the final position. But I would like to land perhaps here. That's not a terrible location. We'll go ahead and warp to that maneuver. And we'll hop out of the map, position over at the retrograde node. We're, again, only using this for timing purposes. Okay, this looks pretty decent. So at one minute, seven and a half seconds, that's when we want to start this burn. And again, we want to make this a little more efficient than it was previously, because we didn't quite get this tank filled. It's incredibly close. But we didn't quite get there. I'm going to go ahead and extend our landing legs for now. We are going to land on them and then retract them after landing because our positioning was a little wrong. The next miner that we put up will have some slight revisions for sure. For one thing, we're probably not going to run these double gigantors. I would like to save some weight there. We may scale back our RCS tank as well. That's another place where we could potentially get some weight savings. And those will be some good things to do. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you for uh, disconnecting, phone. That was wonderful. <laughs> okay, so what's our current target position looking like? I'm not necessarily okay with this. We're going to have to burn off this speed anyway, so we're going to go ahead and do so. And we're moving further and further away from the station. You can see here it's about two kilometers away, and it's going to continue to pass us. And that's completely fine. So let's go ahead and get this guy down to the surface and mining again. This looks relatively okay. I actually don't necessarily hate landing here. That is a definite option. But we'll have to see what our landing position ends up looking like as we get a little closer to the end of this burn. We're only moving at 180 meters per second right now over the surface, and that is fine. I'm going to hold this position. I don't currently care about vertical speed reduction. So I'm going to actually head up to the maneuver marker here. I only care about horizontal surface reduction. And I would love to land right about here. Just a little ways away from the experiment control station. I want to do this as efficiently as possible. So we'll go ahead and land perhaps somewhere like here. Okay, let's go ahead and flip over to retrograde. And we can see our suicide burn countdown is in two minutes. So I'm going to warp ahead about a minute and a half. And that will be absolutely fine. Looks like this is going to be, I think, a reasonable location. Come down. I think. We're going to want to burn this in about 20 seconds. And so we will burn this in just a moment here. Yeah, I think we can save some weight on our solar arrays for sure and on our RCS tank. Maybe have fewer RCS thruster blocks as well. I would definitely love to save a little bit of weight on this thing. So we will begin our landing burn right about now. 
we're going to have to give this a little bit more time here and there. But let's see how flat the location we land at is. Hopefully it'll be really flat. And this will be much more efficient over Minmus as well. Which, by the way, I am planning to put a station up over Minmus as well. And that will be more of a jumping off point to future, uh, to future endeavors. I went ahead and let us drop down a little bit more. This is kind of only here. This station over the moon is kind of only here for flavor. The Minmus station is probably the one that we're going to use a little bit more, but Minmus doesn't exist in the actual solar system, of course. So, yeah, we'll chill on that for now. We'll just get this one ready to go. We're just continuing to reduce our speed here, but our suicide burn countdown is starting to get quite sensitive. And that's to be expected, of course. I think this is going to be a reasonably flat location. I hope it is. We're going to go ahead and just let this continue to drop. Yeah. I'm going to let it drop a little further down to around here. Yeah, that's... I want to let this drop even further. We'll go to like four seconds. Minus four seconds here. Okay. Grain altitude, we're one kilometer up. So this is looking good. Just go ahead and let this speed bleed off a little bit more, and we'll bring this down. There we go. And at this point, I want to reduce throttle until our suicide burn countdown is ticking down a little bit here. There we go. And we'll just increase that descent speed, or rather that reduction speed. I want to decrease my descent speed. <laughs> and we'll bring that down to around 6 meters per second, and whoa! I did not expect to lose landing legs there, in all honesty. I really, really didn't. We were moving at 6 meters per second. Impact tolerance on these is, I think, 12. Baffling. Well, we're relatively stable here, so there's that. But that does mean that we're going to have to retire this guy after this. That's okay. We can get some seismic readings out of it. I'm going to retract these. Now, these drills aren't going to get in here, but we definitely had a landing leg issue. There's no doubt about that. Now, some of these drills are going to be just fine. Some of them are not. I am going to attempt to stand us up here. Yeah, nope. That's not happening. Okay, that's fine. We'll just fill up with this one and we'll retire this and bring up the next model after this guy fills up. I retracted that. We'll deploy that. Yeah, that was definitely an issue. Apparently, we must land first. No ground contact. I'm sorry, what? There is definitely ground contact here. I'm very confused by this. We extend this radiator. Does it break? No, it does not. Fantastic. Well, that was definitely a little faster of a landing than I was intending, I guess, since the legs broke. Nothing else did. But apparently, we don't have ground contact here. I very much question this. Okay, let's see about using some RCS here to get ourselves upright. About as upright as we can. And we'll let this settle. We're going to probably break things here. Must land. No ground contact. I'm very confused by why there's apparently no ground contact here. And why is saying must land first? Like, we're definitely landed. Let's turn SAS off and see what happens if we fully settle. Are we mining? We're not mining. Well, I mean, we did need to retire these and replace them anyway. So, I guess this is fine. Maybe we should just fully retire this, since it does have issues. It definitely proved a few concepts. But... We wanted to replace this anyway, so let's just go ahead and retire it then. In that case, off we go. 
We're just going to go up. And I would love to bring us over this way, over towards our experiment control station. And we are just going to crash it near the experiment control station. We're not going to make any attempt to land it safely. Because we'll just retire this. It's okay. I do want to make those changes. So it's completely fine. So we'll bring this right in over about here. Excellent. And let's go ahead and face prograde. We're coming in head first. I want this thing broken. <laughs> We're breaking it. Okay, let's go ahead and time warp here as we get a little closer. We have started descending. We're breaking it. And this is going to get us some seismic data, so that's perfectly fine. Now, I am going to start accelerating towards the surface. I want it as broken as possible. And yeah, we're going to waste fuel here. That's okay. That is completely okay. So, in we go. And we're going to break it. I was intending to do one more mining run with this, but I, I was intending to retire this. I always was. So, this is fine. This is completely okay. Kaboom! Kaboom! Up seismic readers on this, don't we? I don't actually know. I don't actually know. Yes, this was expected. We're going to head to the Space Center, and we're going to, going to make some changes here. So that also means that I don't want to fully refuel the existing one, because we're going to need to bring up some additional some additional miners here, or at least one additional miner, but probably two. So let's go ahead and work on our mining module here. That is this guy. And I want to make some changes. So the question is, what is the required power flow for these Drillomatic Juniors? That is the first question that I have here. So the power flow for this is 0.3 per second. So, so 1.2 per second, because we have four of them, is what we're going to need. So the Gigantors, they output 24.4, which is way more than we need. We're going to drop this weight. And the Gigantoids also weigh 0.3 tons compared to, say, these guys here that produce more than enough and they weigh far, far less. So we'll go ahead and put those on here. Now, I do think that these RCS thruster blocks are overkill. I also think that this amount of RCS fuel is overkill. So we're going to ditch that. That was the 120, right? Yeah, that was this guy. And we're going to instead go for... Do we want to go for 20? It's probably sufficient. So we can do that, and then we can do two thruster blocks like this. So that'll work. We could also potentially upgrade the docking port junior, but I think I'm going to hold off on that. Other potential options for weight savings on this. Hmm. What else do we want to drop, potentially? Let's see. This this tank is filled. That's completely fine. We could maybe downgrade our thermal control systems. I want to check in here. In that open, if I can. Maybe. Eh, there we go. Okay. So, required cooling of 50 kilowatt hours, or rather 50 kilowatts, and a max cooling of 50 kilowatts. Okay. So, right now, we have on here the thermal control system small here, and that cools 50 kilowatts. Sure. But what about a radiator panel? That also cools 50 kilowatts, and it weighs one-fifth the amount of the thermal control system. So we're going to do that, and we are going to just put the radiator panel right here. Now, in theory, that should transfer because it's attached to the same part that this is attached to. 
it won't pull like the thermal control system would, but in theory, this should work. So I'm gonna save this as is. We're gonna drop this and we're going to launch this without saving. I want to run heat tests. So let's run a quick heat test here. I also want to run a test about the current leg position. Okay, so we'll go ahead and extend these legs. They have been moved up already. Okay, so this is what it is under Kerbin gravity. Under Kerbin gravity, that's a fair amount of reach. I'm a little bit concerned about under non Kerbin gravity. I think that we should probably simulate that. So that is something that I'd like to do, but I want to start this surface, surface harvester here. And I want to check the heat. Okay, so that's going up and over, but we haven't activated this radiator. That is currently decreasing. Oh, we did get the seismic sensor data. Fantastic. Okay, so we'll stop this harvester and let this go back down to 500K. And yeah, that works perfectly. Fantastic. Now, the next question is, what's our energy flow? In theory, this energy flow should be sufficient, but we will find out. So we'll deploy all this, activate our radiator. Excellent. And we will begin starting our harvesting. There we go. And we can see here our electric charge is sufficient with all of this active. That is great. So this is definitely a little bit lighter. I'm still worried about the leg situation. So I would like, is there a way to set ourselves onto, yes, this is what I want. I wanna just set ourselves onto the moon. I don't really care where. I wanna test our gravity, whoa. This is uh, an interesting direction to be going. <laughs> okay, that is an issue with the simulation for sure. Our heading should be at what, zero? Okay, technically that broke it. So we're going to revert that back to the launch and we'll try that again. We don't actually care about the position here. I just want to make sure that this is all going to work. So with our heading in degrees at zero, we'll set that position. Okay. Once again, that didn't work. I'm sure that there's a way to do it. I'm absolutely sure of that. We also currently don't have any data connection, which is a slight issue. Where exactly are we on this? We're over here? Okay. I mean, given the current direction that the moon is facing, that's not shocking that we don't have data. But yeah, I want to definitely get this simulated in such a way. We'll move our altitude up to like 30. Okay. So we still don't have any control here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to clear the input lock. And that will just allow me to pitch this. This is just a simulation, so it's completely fine. Okay. There we go. And we will extend our landing legs. Ah, there we go. We're good. <laughs> we'll extend our landing legs. And the only thing I wanted to check is if we have the reach here. I believe we should. We moved this up a fairly substantial amount. So let's see how that works. Yes, we're good. Okay. I would like to free up a little bit more weight, of course. But yeah, this is very, very good. We have definitely freed up a good chunk of weight. 
So that's fantastic. Of course, we're going to revert this back. That was all just a simulation. I just wanted to make absolutely sure that that would be correct. And we're going to open up, not this, but rather the mining module. There we go. I still don't understand how this fuel flow works, but you know what? It's fine. So we have definitely freed up quite a lot of weight here. And let's just go ahead and save this and send this on up as our fuel, or rather as our ore module Mark II. And then we're going to need about 500 and some meters per second in order to deorbit the existing one. And then we'll probably want to replace it with another one of these. So up we go. This should not need a fairing or anything of that nature. We are moving now at almost 100 meters per second. We'll go ahead and shift over into orbital mode and begin heading on over. Ah, uh, yes, this guy is pretty stable. Yeah, that's definitely a thing. That is definitely a thing. Lots and lots of stability. Too much stability, in fact. This thing definitely has too much stability here. That's okay. Only 12 kilometers right now for our apoapsis. Sure, we're definitely going to have to continue heading on over here. Okay, 18 kilometers on the apoapsis. I'm going to hold at this 45 degree marker for now. And then we'll head over to the prograde in a moment once we get a little bit higher. There, we'll go on and head to prograde now. Should be fine. We're continuing to get that seismic sensor data. That's great. And our apoapsis height is 50 kilometers. Fantastic. We're going to go up to about 75 here. There we go. I do want to ditch these nose cones, but I will wait until we get a little higher. And we're going to go ahead and put in our maneuver, of course, right about here. And we will just do something along the lines of this. I don't care too much about the actual orbit as long as we are in orbit. We're going to go ahead and head down towards that maneuver node as quick as we can, which isn't tremendously quick. According to this, it's a 22 second burn. We'll see how accurate that actually is once we get into space proper. Okay. We'll hold here. I'm going to go ahead and ditch our nose cones now. Excellent. Don't need that weight. And we will be in space in just a moment here. Sixty five kilometers. Sixty seven. Going to be about nine hundred ninety three meters per second. OK, that's fine. We'll have plenty left over. We are in space as of now. T minus 10 seconds is when we want to burn this. And this will, of course, be a pure prograde orbit or a pure prograde burn. You can go ahead and change over towards that. And we'll burn this now. Excellent. Let's get that sweet, sweet horizontal speed. And then we'll transfer all of our fuel up that we have remaining and ditch this stage. Just going to burn until our periapsis height is high enough, which it will be now. Save this 18 meters per second. It will be far more efficient loaded into our upper stage engine. So we'll go ahead and pin open all four of these empty fuel tanks. And we will take the fuel out of this tank and move it on over. I'll go ahead and time warp while that's happening. There we go. And same thing over here. I may have to not be on time warp to start it. Yes, that is correct. 
So there we go. We got these tanks filled up, what, about a third of the way. That's not too shabby. We will go ahead and ditch this stage at this point. It is no longer necessary. Perfect. And we're going to, of course, head off to the moon. Burning at this periapsis is actually not a terrible idea. Just burn about like this. That will be fine. Two minutes and 11 seconds, so we want to burn this at T minus one minute and five and a half seconds. We'll go ahead and warp towards that. And we'll get this guy going now. Excellent. So that'll be 800 of our meters per second, but we should have absolutely no problem getting into this station fairly, fairly efficiently. We'll definitely work on that. Don't believe we're coming in retrograde. No, we are not. So that is absolutely, absolutely fine. Wonderful. I should, before I forget, open up our photovoltaic panels just in case. And there's one, and the other one is hiding behind the KER frame, but there we go. Excellent. We'll remain in darkness for a little bit here. Got another 500 meters per second to burn. Let's go ahead and physics warp this. Excellent. And we should be heading to the moon very, very shortly with our new and improved model. And this model should be more than efficient enough. Okay, that'll do. We'll go ahead and do a retrograde burn here. Bring that on down to about the same plane or rather the same orbital height as our station. Something along the lines of that. Our inclination is a little different, but that's okay. This is a little too far. Yeah, that'll do. Excellent. It is, however, time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we are going to bring in our new and improved mining module, and we'll deorbit our existing one as soon as we... You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. I will see you all next time.